Well, hello there. This is John McGringo.dev. I'm checking in with you all after some weeks, actually. Uh, my folks came to visit me in Mexico City, along with my brother, too. So I had a lot of fun showing them around and uh, also got sick afterwards and had to recover and all these things. But anyway, I'm back. And uh, my first video since coming back, I wanted to cover a topic that I was looking into myself rather recently to share some of my findings and recommendations. But um, that is the question of which cloud database to use, Neon versus PlanetScale. And so I have actually played with both of these, more so with PlanetScale because I've used that in production apps in the past. Uh, Neon, of course, is relatively new. Um, just got adopted by Vercel as kind of their default storage product. Um, but let's get into it. So off the top, there's actually like a lot of similarities. I'd say in general, they're more similar than they are different, probably. Just sort of in the broadest sense, they're both managed and cloud uh, relational databases. And so um, in that sense, it's probably hard to go wrong with either option. Um, I think the relational versus non-relational question is a lot more important than which particular relational DB you choose. Um, and as it happens, I released uh, what is still my most popular video um, about the differences between different um, relational DBs uh, that you can go find. And so I think actually the, the biggest ingredient to making a decision here is going to be, do you want to use Postgres or do you want to use MySQL? It's because PlanetScale is a MySQL or more precisely a Vitesse uh, derivative and Postgres um, is what powers Neon. Um, even though there are architectural differences and they've tweaked things to make them more scalable, like fundamentally that is still the, the distinction. And whichever one of those solutions you feel is better for your use case, if either, is probably going to be the correct answer here too. So rather than rehashing all of that, I'm going to focus my attention on uh, the differences between that are specific more or less between uh, Planet Scale and Neon, as opposed to the MySQL and Postgres. So um, just to kind of talk about the popularity dimension or adoption dimension, not that that should be really the, the biggest factor um, or even a big factor in how you make decisions, um, it's still just useful to know that you're not going to be on an island um, using one. The good news is that you're not going to be on an island with either one. So um, Vitesse is just enormously popular in its own right. It's been around for a long time, very badly tested. It came out of YouTube originally when they had trouble uh, scaling MySQL. Um, and it's an open source project and all of that uh, used by a, a bunch of different companies. Um, so that's great. Uh, Neon is newer. And, you know, you could argue that just it hasn't had as much time to, to bake. That being said, I mean, for sale, they just adopt them as their database product, which I do think is a, a big vote of confidence um, since Vercel is increasingly just becoming the default choice for how people deploy at least small apps. Um, so good to know there as well. So um, I do think that if you want to look at a maturity angle specifically, the test probably has the edge, but there are a lot of people using both. Um, then as far as the uh, developer experience angle, um, again, having used both, I think that Planet Scale is definitely more slick, more mature, um, they handle more of the, the life cycle around the, the database and just call it like the database operations side. Um, but the, the trade-off there is, you know, Neon has much better compatibility with the, the base database. Um, and so Postgres in the case of Neon. Um, so more precisely, Planet Scale restricts you from doing some things that are not particularly scalable, like foreign key constraints are definitely the most famous restriction. Um, and you could argue that's actually partly because they want to protect you from yourself. Uh, four key constraints can be one of those things that are very tricky to scale as the database gets bigger and bigger. Um, and just to, to unpack that a little bit, I think part of the reason that's the case is that um, the most sort of scalable way to scale a relational database is usually some flavor of uh, row level sharding where you're taking pieces of a database and you're making them independent enough that you can distribute them uh, across a cluster. And so that's great, but the, the key there is they need to be independent. And so the, the essence of uh, foreign key constraint is that um, it has a relationship potentially to lots of other things in uh, different tables. And if you're not very careful about making sure that all of those things stay together, it can be difficult to scale those things across different nodes in the cluster, especially with consistency. And so in a system like Vitesse, um, you know, within a shard, you can still, because it is fundamentally a MySQL instance running within the shard, you can still maintain a lot of that consistency um, guarantees. But the moment you have to cross shards to start joining data together, which is something that the test can do, uh, but you start losing some of those guarantees. And of course it gets a lot slower because you're basically talking about pulling data from two servers and joining it together. Uh, but in any case, so I do think that's part of the reason why the test has that restriction, although they're theoretically working on a way to do at least part of it. Um, so 
you could view it as something of a trade-off. I think Neon has better compatibility with Postgres, just it does. Um, but you could argue that maybe some of the things that it enables you to do are not things that you should do anyway from a scalability standpoint. So exercise with the reader on that one. So as far as cost, which I know is one of the most important ingredients, um, because the models themselves are different, it's not so easy to compare. Um, Planet Scale has sort of a tiered system where you, by buying into a higher tier, you stop getting charged per row and stuff like that. But then you can also opt for a certain um, compute level, like a, a more powerful machine with more vCPU and RAM and all of this stuff. Um, so it, it is a little bit difficult to, to figure out how to compare apples to apples. Um, I will just say that instead of uh, comparing like number to number what's more expensive, you, you probably should be thinking about this more in terms of what is your use case and how are each of those dimensions going to scale, right? So it's very easy to get caught up in the free tier. Like uh, Planet Scale, for example, has a very generous free tier. I think it's five or 10 gigabytes and, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, the storage is actually fairly expensive after that relative to other options as one example, right? So um, just don't make decisions. What my advice would be don't make decisions based on the free tier that, that are going to be difficult to undo later. Um, so in other words, if Postgres is a better choice for your use case, for example, because certain extensions will allow you to avoid having another piece of infrastructure that you have to maintain, then, um, you know, don't go to planet scale just because of a, a very generous free tier. You know, think about the, the future, you know, at least to like the next six or 12 months in a time frame. So in any case, um, thinking about this through the lens of use cases, on one extreme, it's like if you had a media app, right? Like there's a lot of storage involved with that, storage for songs or videos or whatever it is. Um, but that's probably not gonna be in your database. That's gonna be in an S3 bucket or something like that. And you know, in contrast, your relational data might be relatively small. You have user accounts and subscriptions and uh, maybe some metadata about tracks, but um, probably not a whole lot else. And then on the other extreme, if you were doing some AI stuff or whatever, like let's say that you were ingesting uh, wikis for corporations or something to do, uh, I don't know, an LLM or some sort of a smart search or answer base or something. So in that case, you have to ingest a lot of data and store it so that you can calculate your embeddings and all that downstream stuff. And then in those cases, um, yeah, actually the, the cost per gigabyte to store things probably matters quite a lot. Because if you're lucky, you're probably onboarding let's say 10 gigabytes per client, you start having 100 clients, right? You're all, all of a sudden you're talking about the terabytes of data. Um, and that actually might be a case where Neon's sort of separate um, storage architecture could, could really shine. And the fact that it's like, I think less than one-tenth the cost per gigabyte, it's like $1.50 on planet scale versus 12 and a half cents for, uh, for Neon. In an application like that, it's like, yeah, actually that, that's probably gonna scale much better on Neon. So just, it kind of depends on your use case. like like most things. Um, but, you know, I would definitely encourage you to think through a couple of scenarios and just try to model what your particular application looks like before making a decision, at least based on cost. As far as scalability goes, um, you know, the architectural differences do exist between the two platforms. Vitesse is more of a shared nothing architecture. And so I think the basic idea there, I don't claim to be an expert, but I think the basic idea is that uh, Vitesse sits between you and your cluster and your queries and everything kind of pass through that and it can do whatever it needs in terms of routing those queries or manipulating them so that they go to the right place and, and all of that stuff. And so, uh, but within a, a shard, um, you actually have just sort of a vanilla MySQL instance um, and those shards not really share anything between them. And so theoretically scaling up is just a matter of adding, you know, more shards, more, um, more nodes to your cluster, right? And so in that sense, uh, when people talk about the tests being infinitely scalable, that's kind of what they're talking about is that, um, you know, you really just have to throw more power at it. And as long as you have a good way to divide your rows or a, a good way to shard your data, it doesn't have to be row based necessarily, um, you can scale to the moon, you know. Um, so Neon, in contrast, is you could argue a bit of a simpler architecture. Uh, perhaps not as scalable, but the, the big, I guess, innovation that they made on base Postgres is that um, they've kept the compute layer, so like where queries happen and all of that pretty much intact, um, but they have extracted out the compute side of, sorry, excuse me, the storage side of that into, um, into another layer. And so the idea is that you can um, cloud natively scale your storage. And so storage can be very cheap and durable and all of those things. Uh, for Neon, but fundamentally it's a single node system. 
And so you're going to have the same limitations that you would have running a single node of Postgres on some level. Um, so you can alleviate that a little bit. Um, like one of the more obvious ways that you can do write leader replication. And so uh, you, you can imagine if you had an app that's like 99% reads and 1% writes, which isn't that unusual, um, you know, to distribute the load a little bit better. Instead of saying we have one Postgres uh, node that does all of this. Um, so Neon does support like having replicas, right? So you could say, okay, well, we're going to start distributing our reads across, let's say 10 different nodes. Uh, but meanwhile, we have one primary uh, where you can write data. And, you know, in theory, that will scale a lot better, right? Because uh, writes are a very small percentage of what you're doing. Um, so you should be able to scale that uh, pretty far. And then you just uh, alleviate some of the burden on that one server, um, you know, by doing replication across uh, many nodes. And so um, I think most apps are actually going to get pretty far to scaling vertically. Um, and then in addition, doing right leader replication and all of that um, to scale even further. I think you can get very, very far with that. And I believe Neon is working on uh, doing like real level sharding as well. And so you put all of that together. I think the story around scaling and planet scale is stronger for sure. And the track record of companies reaching huge scale on the underlying technology, which again, if the test is also stronger. Uh, but Neon doesn't have a bad story, right? It's like Postgres itself scales pretty well vertically. And you have some degree of horizontal scalability in the, the form of uh, read replicas and all of that as well. Um, so that's one of those things where like, I think if you got to the point where you were really truly starting to bump into the, the limits of what you could do on Dion, at that point, you can probably just hire somebody who really understands Postgres and figure out what you're going to do. Uh, whether that's going to Citus, which is kind of a test-like system for Postgres or something more bespoke or, you know, what have you. Um, so one of those things that I, I, it's worth noting, but I probably wouldn't make my decision based on that. Um, one thing that is interesting is uh, vector data specifically. So in my case, when I was evaluating this, vector data was a very important part of the decision-making process, simply because I don't want to maintain more infrastructure than I have to. I have to get an MVP out the door and start testing. And so uh, something like PG vector is very, um, let's say, enticing from that perspective, because instead of having to deploy planet scale plus Redis or some other system um, for doing my, my vector searches, um, instead I can just do all of it out of Postgres, or in this case, Neon, right? And so Neon is compatible with those extensions, really all extensions that I know of. So uh, that's just highly convenient. So actually, for that reason alone, I ended up going with Neon. Uh, some of the stuff around, you know, the the lower cost data at rest and all of that uh, was kind of a bonus. But uh, it is interesting, though. So Planet Scale is building its own support for vector data, um, and I thought the justification was interesting. So um, I uh, I have it down here, Sam Lambert body slams Oracle. But here's this TechCrunch article um, that I was reading the other day, and so. You know, plan scale forks might sequel to add vector support. That's great. I just saw some of the quotes in here were actually like pretty good. So, um, you know, Sam, who's a huge fan of MySQL, and if you don't know, so he's the CEO of Planet Scale and was a VP, I think, of engineering at GitHub, which is also a MySQL uh, user, and I think of a test user now as well, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, basically talking mad shit about Oracle and how they don't innovate. Um, so this whole article is worth a read, uh, frankly, but you know. Just the, uh, there was a quote at the bottom I wanted to get. It's a great MySQL is so reliable, no one questions it. No one has ever said that it's not reliable, that it's not scalable. That doesn't give Oracle the excuse to stop shipping and responding to these trends, and that's why we're here. That's why we're picking this up. There was a lot of that throughout the article too. So, you know, for whatever that's worth, um, I think it's interesting that, you know, everything I've seen from Planet Scale up to now has just been like very raw, raw pro MySQL. Um, so it is interesting to see some cracks in that uh, united front, let's say a little bit, where um, I don't know what their their angle is exactly. Like maybe they're trying to take the mantle of my people steward away from Oracle, or maybe they're just genuinely frustrated um, or what have you. But they made a point of saying it only took us six weeks to do this, and like Oracle, blah blah blah. Um, so it's just interesting, right? So like again, I don't know that this is worth making a decision over, but it just is interesting to note that uh, even the biggest boosters of by SQL are having uh, an issue with how Oracle is managing the project. Um, and so who knows, right? Like that could either end up with Planet Scale taking a bigger role and merging some of that code upstream, or it could be something of a, a schism in the MySQL community. So time will tell on that one. But yeah, in my case, it just made a lot of sense. Like I don't have the time to wait for Planet Scale to, to finish their vector support. 
Um, I don't want to rule out Redis or any other system to do it for me. I'd rather just have one data store that I can use for everything. And so for my case, Neon made a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to go through this exercise yourselves and see what makes sense for you. But uh, so far, I've been impressed with it. Um, and I hope you will be as well. But uh, like I said in the beginning, there really isn't a bad choice to be made here. It's just a question of what you want to optimize for. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Um, I'm going to start making videos again more frequently. If you have any thoughts on what you want to see next, let me know. And I will see you guys la próxima vez.